Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Bits, where today we're going to be going through the UI on the new Chevy Blazer EVSS. I'm going to be speaking with Stefan Trentacosta, one of the engineers from Chevy, because I'm going to take us on a deep dive of all the user interface features and benefits of this new system. All right, Stefan, take me on a tour of this UI. This whole this whole interior feels really nice, um, but I'm curious about the decision that you made of having your own interface with Google Maps tied into route planning, tied tied into um, preconditioning of the battery, which is you know something that i think that a lot of people are frustrated with with certain evs is that you've got the the house system whatever that is the car's internal system but yet you like to use perhaps waze or google maps or something else and when you use google maps and you put in your destination now all of a sudden you lose preconditioning and and so you've kind of merged all this into one you don't need to use apple carplay or android auto to get waze which i love so I'd love for you to kind of tell me your, your theory behind this and, and take me through a little demonstration. Yeah, that's correct. We have a native in-house developed infotainment software that is taking you know our hardware and software and service capabilities and bringing them all together. Um, you know We're sharing some industry standard data from the vehicle to be provided to the Google Maps that helps with route planning. Um, it doesn't just tell you your estimated arrival time, it actually takes real-time information from the vehicle to actually be able to predict what your remaining state of charge will be as you arrive to your destination or if you would need to plan any sort of charging stop. So I actually am logged into my personal Google account here. You know, I have my home and work location set up back in Michigan, so we could set a route from here in Charlotte back to the proving grounds back in Michigan. Now, when you hit that loading the route, is it sending a signal up to the cloud and then it's doing the calculation then and sending it back? Or is the calculation being done locally in the, in the car? It is a combination of, you know, taking the information from the vehicle, also being connected to the Google map services and kind of, you know, calculating that in real time. All right, so this is telling me we're gonna go it's going to be a 13 hour trip and that's inclusive of charging stops. And we're going to do four charging stops. We're here down in, in Charlotte. By the way, the screen's snappy guys. That's like no joke. Look at that. That's pretty good. Um, all right. And the first charging stop we're going to do is right here and it's saying 58 minutes. So let's go ahead and look at that. How would I look at that charging stop? So around here, you see it's predicting four charging stops. Yeah. We can open that up. It looks like it'll be two hours and 13 minutes until we arrive at this Electrify America station. Okay. In Whiteville with All a 14% right. estimated state of charge. And then it's saying we should charge for approximately 58 minutes and that should give us- Enough time, enough, enough juice enough. to get to the next station. Yep. Right, okay. Yep, and that'll be updating in real time, you know, using your driving, you know, how you know the behavior on the road. Right. And then it'll also take into account traffic, real time traffic information to mm -hmm. also predict. And then it even does, you know, what most customers are used to with Google Maps. You know, if there's congestion on a certain spot spot on your route, um, it can give you alternatives to navigate around that and hopefully save time. Over here, I've got the total mileage that's, that. how do I switch between percentage state of charge and total mileage on yep. the vehicle? So we will always show the uh, mileage remaining there on the lower left part of the screen. Okay. But on this single gauge view, you can see here we're 70% 
Oh, remaining over here. State of charge. Yep. Okay. So that so, shows so, you your whole battery zero to one hundred percent on that gauge there. Okay. So let's get this route started. Oh, okay. And now we'll see. We oh, are right 140 here. Okay, miles good. Away. So, so, you can, so this is yep. the game I played. So I got 260 in the tank. I got 140 there. I'm going to arrive at a state of charge of 14%. And that's dynamic. As I'm driving, as the weather or altitude, ups and downs, what have you, my speed. Yeah, you'll see this. That's going to change, change dynamically. Right. Okay, that's good. That's yep. very good. And one other cool thing with our integrated Google Maps is a Super Cruise standard equipped vehicle. This white line here on the route shows you you're capable of using Super Cruise on that road. Okay, so. and, and the reason for that is because Super Cruise will only work on what, what I would call mapped roads. Yep. Is that right? Correct. And so, so what happens on a road that is not mapped with the advanced driver assistance? So if you're driving on that road and you tried to use the button to activate, activate Super Cruise, you'll get a message in the DIC that would say map road not unavailable Super Cruise. But I'm, I'm able to do uh, adaptive cruise control on a road like that, yes. right? Just not yep. the lane centering? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And Super Cruise does, it does have, I think we were talking about this earlier, where it, if you, you, you could put the turn signal yeah. on and it'll take the lane for you. I'm going to test this out tomorrow. Let's show you that. So yes, there's a customizable setting for Super Cruise lane change. Three options, off, turn signal activated. So you would hit the turn signal and when the vehicle detects it's safe to do so, it would automatically change the lane for you there. Or there's automatic where it'll detect a slower vehicle that you're approaching and then it'll put on the turn signal automatically and when it's safe, it'll navigate around that slower vehicle on its own. So tell me about the layout. What's, what's interesting, first of all, I love, I love these, um, the vents and all of that, just being physical, but you have a combination of a lot of the big screen, the touch screen, plus a lot of dedicated buttons. And I think that's, um, that's a nice touch. Can you just take me through an overview of the whole, yeah, the whole so UI? This, yeah, this vehicle standard dual climate system. So driver has their own temperature, passenger has theirs. They can operate those independently. You also have these buttons here for the heated and vented seats, same thing. Driver has their own independent control, same with the passenger. Um, and then you have your standard climate options there for fan speed, blower modes. You can, you know, some I, myself, when I drive, you know, I'll set this to, you know, 72 degrees, hit it on auto, and then the system automatically is, you know, adjusting the cabin temperature based on that, and I don't ever have to think about it. So I can't, I can't run the ventilated seats when the heated, the heated seats are on? Nope. Okay. All right. That's a pet peeve of my son. We love that. I don't know why he loves that, but he loves that. It's a funny Ru thing. Running both of yeah, them? Yeah, he loves to run them both. I don't know why, but he loves to do that. Um, Okay, very nice. I didn't realize it had uh, ventilated seats. Is that that's standard on the SS? Yes. Okay, yep. Yep. very nice. Heated seats in the rear as well. Yep. Standard on the out 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 the outsides. Yep. Okay. So this is the home button here. Yeah. So you can see this is our home screen with the the app layout. Um, we have a lot of native apps, and then we've integrated these Google ones. Um, we have the Google Assistant and the Play Store. Um, so you can use the Google Assistant as your voice rec to command, you know, Bluetooth music or sending text, things like that. You can even use it to actually command some things in the vehicle. So you can ask it to change the temperature. So you can do that all hands-free if you want as well. So another way to control all those things. Mm -hmm. um, watching videos when you're charging the car and uh, your kids are restless and they want to watch Netflix or YouTube. Is that, a, you're able to do that with this system? Yeah, so the Blazor EV SS will be the first Blazor EV that gets access to those streaming apps within the Play Store. So you'll log into your account to be able to access this. And then you have access to things like Prime Video, HBO Max, and you can use those logins to then, you know, utilize those streaming services for, you know, charging stops or if you have a kid playing soccer and you want to pass the time, mm -hmm. you can just sit in your car parked and pop on your favorite show and keep watching that. Now, if I were to use PlugShare as opposed to the route planning within the system, that that data is not transferring in for things like... No. Nope. Like, uh, okay. No, so our standard data from the vehicle is only shared with the native Google Maps app that's right. built in. 
but it's funny you say native Google, right? You know, that's what I like about it. It is native, but the fact is because you've chosen Google, you you open yourself up to so much as opposed to just a system that's 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 closed in. So if I wanted to run Waze, how would I do that? Yeah, so Waze is one of the downloadable apps here. Oh, there it is. So then you would just go in here, hit install, and then you'd be able to use Waze as your navigation app. Sirius XM has one of the selectable audio sources like preloaded in here. Mm -hmm. um, it will need a subscription package to be used. Um, and then you can see we have other audio streaming apps like Spotify, Amazon Music, Google News, and right. Alexa. Is the stereo any better in this car than it is the RS or the bass? So Blazer EVSS is standard with the Bose audio system. Okay. And actually the only variant that will have the Bose audio system. I see. One of the unique features to this variant is the wow mode button. So that is a button here. It's the two lightning bolts kind of be shaped like a, a W. Um, that button's available in any of the drive modes, and that is activating all of that 615 horsepower to be at, at the driver's use to really have some fun with this vehicle. Right, okay. And then the other unique exclusive feature for SS within drive modes is this new Z mode. So this is a, an additional customizable mode that the driver will get to use where similar to my mode they get the ability to customize steering brake feel acceleration feel motor sound and then also introduces our new competition mode for this vehicle and turning that on really opens up the um, or really loosens up the stability and traction control to really you know have some fun with this vehicle it's still on just to save you but you know yeah. not, not completely you see a fun road coming up right you can get this turned on and okay. really have some fun with it. so the difference between my mode and z mode these are customized the, my mode is a customized setting z mode is customized plus competitive is that the way i, I yeah that's accurate and, okay. and what i we kind of see it as is maybe a my mode you're tuning a little bit different um so normal sport snow and ice are standard or, or more defined controls. Um, mm -hmm. My mode allows you to tune it to your liking. Um, so what we kind of see is my mode might be, I want to have a little bit different setup, maybe a more relaxed thing. Mm -hmm. And then Z mode will be my, okay, I'm really gonna want to have more performance out of this, but I want to tweak one of these things gotcha. to my liking. Okay, not. all right. No, that's good. All right, so that's so those are the modes right over yep. here. And so my mode will latch over key cycles. The Z mode will not. Got it. Okay. And the, wow mode will not latch over key cycles. Right. So if you shut the car off, you'll have to turn on wow mode again. Right. Controls and safety. Heads up display. Is this a augmented reality or? Nope. Okay. Nope. We're going through the whole UI timing. How's it going? Oh, it's it's good. We're just talking about the HUD right now. Yep. So if we open that up. We'll turn that on, and you have some ability to adjust that positioning for your liking. Okay, all right. Yeah, height, I see it rotation, there. All right, height. You know, really allowing the customer to customize the vehicle yeah. however they see fit. Well, that's nice. Yeah, and the rotation. Okay, I like that. That's a really slick implementation of there. So you've got you've got um, directions that are showing up in there, and the time, miles per hour. And 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 I would imagine turn by turn directions are, are up in there, which is which is nice. Okay, I like that. That's standard on the SS. Uh, HUD is standard on the SS. Yeah. It's optional content on some of our other trims. Okay. Yeah. So this here is kind of a split view, um, given the ability to you know have your audio information and the map information shown on the same page. You can actually hit this pencil here be able to customize it and change it up with these options here for mm -hmm. however you want to see fit. Then we've got no phone. Okay, that's your Bluetooth connectivity. Yep, yep. This um, this is the charging app. Okay. So, yep, we have settings here. Um, you can set a home location to change some preferences within that. Um, there's some notification settings that you can toggle. You have your fast charge prep. So we offer the ability to begin fast charge prepping at any time. Um, if you are... It, are you talking about manual preconditioning? Yes. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. And then um, if you are on a planned route, um, when you're about 20 minutes away from your charging station, it'll actually automatically turn on the preconditioning for you. So yeah, you're ready for that fast charging. Okay. Got it. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that comes in handy if you're using an app other than, let's say, the native you know, system. If I'm using whatever, you know, Apple Maps or, or, or Zelle, Zelle, or Waze. Well, it, Zelle means Zelle, I, you, yeah, got, you got to send me some money. Well, yeah. you know that's the app I really want, right? <laughs> not, not, only to receive money, not to send it. But um, if I'm using Waze, then I could actually I know I can actually precondition the battery, and I can do that at any yeah. point in time. Um, or if you know your route and you're not needing to enter it in, but you know you're uh, you know 20 minutes away from there, you know you can manually start that without having to set a route. Right. Backup camera. And also 360 view. view. Yep. And then you can, this is actually our front camera. You can go select the back view. And then you have a couple of different options too to show here. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. What is this little device here? So that is the driver monitoring system. So when you're in Super Cruise, this is monitoring what you're doing as okay. a driver and making sure you're still attentive and paying attention to what's happening on the road Got around you. you. And is the wheel capacitive or torque? Capacitive sensor. Capacitive sensors. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much yeah. for this overview. I appreciate it. Yeah. Excellent.